Get ready, get set, for the best movie and pop culture talk in the universe, it's The Good Brothers on Mercado Airwaves, with your hosts, Alex Mercado and Mike Mercado. Episode of The Good Brothers, I'm Alex, that's Mike, we are The Good Brothers, The Best Brothers, we are your highwaymen, from New York to L.A., say hi to the folks, Mike. Hi folks, my good brother, happy new year, thank you for joining us, it's a start 2021, only the good brothers start a day late and a dollar short, but sure enough, we wanted to make sure that we start off this weekend right, and I appreciate you joining us virtually over Zoom. We are working on the Mercado Airwave Studios. It is going to look pristine and sound wonderful in 2021. Good brother, how are you enjoying the start of this new year? So far, so good. My Buckeyes won a very well fought game. I don't know, man. Things are looking up. Bears might make the playoffs. I got them winning tomorrow, so... We'll find out if that plays out. And, of course, if you want to see how I think it is going to play out, I actually have put out the numbers. I hit on 66% on my picks this season in the NFL. And as the good brother would attest to, that is pretty impressive when you can not only pick half, but more than half of the NFL games correctly in a COVID season. So I am super proud of how I have in sports from the couch on our picks. And a lot of that has to come do with talking to the audience and, of course, doing some research. So make sure you guys are checking that out during the the rest of this weekend but good brother we have some stuff we want to talk about that is uh, obviously we haven't talked to each other when it comes to the podcast in a few weeks you know Christmas has happened a lot of stuff has came through since New Year's I think what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about maybe one or two big stories and then when we're back in the studio we'll break anything down that's still kind of lingering I want to start off with obviously the sad news that happened over the last few days, the last few weeks, when it happened to AEW's, WWE's loved one, the indie darling, Luke Harper, Mr. Brody Lee, John Huber, who passed away at 41 years old. Obviously, some sad news in the wrestling community really struck the wrestling community in a in a hard way. We saw both companies share out their thoughts with their superstars, and of course, AEW doing the wonderful tributes to Mr. Brody Lee. So obviously we all hear the words that all the superstars were talking about from all these companies around the world. You and I, if you've been listening to this show, the Good Brothers for the last two years that we've been doing it, huge Luke Harper stands, Mr. Brody Lee stands. You were the one who got me onto the Dark Order on B the Elites, behind the Elites. So uh, is it BTE correct, right, Good Brother? Yes, it's correct. BT, being the elite. Being the elite, so with the Young Bucks thing. So uh, just let me know, you know, what do you think about this terrible news and kind of the aftermath of it? You know, it really sucks because um, the Wyatt family was one of those things that got me back into wrestling in college because they had kind of hit that, the Shield, Daniel Bryan. That's what really got me into it. And I remember me and my college roommates would use your WWE Network account because we all grew up fans but kind of fell off because, you know, you're not, you're not paying for the pay-per-views. You know, you might not have cable. I know I didn't have cable my freshman year in college because it was a small town sports school. So they didn't really care if you had those amenities. So it was nice to get back into wrestling. And Luke Harper was one of my favorites. You know, it's true. Everyone thought, like, this is going to be Taker 2.0. I think we got to see that at AEW, definitely, of like, oh, no, he can play this kind of character. One of my favorite wrestlers. His IC title run is one of my favorites against Dolph Ziggler. Everything he did. But I think as just outside of it you and me have one thing in common work-wise is we get to work in a field we're passionate about our peers you know there's so many of them at different studios or different gyms in my case and you all get to know each other a little bit and the thing he did is what you want to do in any career is that no one has a bad thing to say about you whether you were the top or the bottom you treated everyone the same you were respectful and you were loved and you were beloved honestly and I think that's the legacy he leaves. And that's why it was so hard. And it was such a beautiful tribute that they did. And it really, you know, got to everyone. I think what really struck me this time around, too, is you and I, as you know, we make jokes about it and we're getting older. You know, obviously we're young in the grand scheme of things. But when you say something like that, there is no true in the grand scheme of things. You're as old as the universe lets you be. So being yep. 30 years old, getting married in 2021, looking down the pipeline of starting a family and you start thinking like that's only 11 years. 
And to think that that's how fast it could all come to an end. And, you know, he had his son who was eight years old who isn't a fucking idiot. Shout out to BT, BTE. But, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> it's that idea of, like, I can't imagine that. Like, he had so much life left to give to be with his son, be with his other uh, child and obviously his wife. But it's just kind of the way the universe goes. And to me, when something like this happens and it's somebody who's beloved, like you said, it makes you really just kind of – I think 2020, it's really lame to say, but it really did have that. You have to just have a perspective, a retrospective, some empathy, some sympathy, and some acknowledgement of everything that happened and what you lost, what you gained, what you learned. And the the Brody Lee thing at the end of the year, and, you know, it, it, it really just helped solidify what 2020 was, which was a year of a lot of just sadness and grief. And learning, and I think, you know, whether even you're in the community, and I think uh, his name was Doom, the rapper who passed away. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it all happened really fast. It all happened at the end of the year, and when we were all getting ready to kind of just put that chapter behind you. So I think what Mr. Brody Lee did on top of everything has shown, it doesn't matter what the industry is. The most important thing is what montage do you make at the end of your life? And at the end of it, he was beloved by his peers, more importantly, his family. And he left this earth with a lot of people believing that there was much more to give. And I think that is the ultimate sign of respect. And hopefully, with all the death, all the loss that we had in 2020, I hope that we bring that to 2021 in a way that we realize how fragile this is. So if you can go see, you know, when this pandemic is over, you can go see your grandparents a little extra. Or you can go see your parents a little extra. Or you can be a little bit nicer to the people in your office. All these little cliches that we always say, now is the time for that to be real. And I hate preaching about it, but if we're starting a new year and where somebody so beloved was lost at such a young age, anybody can go. We're talking about peak athlete, you know? Yeah, and again, it goes to, I think one thing we can take away positive from him was gamble on yourself. Don't be afraid to leave something comfortable and take a chance on yourself because he did that. And, and I would say the last six months were the best of his entire career. And he has a very, you know, star study career and he was doing the best work of his life. And he left this, you know, a very stable paycheck to gamble on himself thinking I'm better than this and proving, Oh wait, he is better than me. Okay, cool. And he made a bunch of billions and millions of Chili's money. So shout out to Mr. Brody Lee. Shout out to Negative One. Shout out to the family, the wife, the young child that won't get to know their but a rhino. Yeah, won't get a chance to uh, really know his father who, by all accounts, by everybody in his life, and that's how we could judge a person, that he will be – one of the good ones is gone. So make sure you yeah. send out a text message to – to the people in your life and just show them a little love. And even if it's a little corny, show them some love in your own way. But good brother, I think the uh, best way to to kind of end this uh, story of uh, Mr. Brody Lee is just to say uh, thank you to Mr. Brody Lee. Thank you to all the performers and thank you to all the people that give us entertainment in the purest ways, whether it's wrestling, music, movies, your favorite artists, your favorite podcast, you know, in the craziness that it is today, when somebody could bring you joy in so many different ways, I think that's important. So thank you to Mr. Brody Lee. Good brother. We go from one story that really hit home in so many true ways and, and really made us reflect on a little different things to something that came out during the holiday season that made us reflect in a more entertaining way, in a way that kind of brought things back to normalcy, if you will, heading into 2021. Good brother, we're not going to do a deep, deep dive conversation on it because obviously over the internet, it's not the most conducive way to do it when we're going to be so passionate about it. But let's talk a little bit about Wonder Woman 1984. We're not going to get into. So you want to start with you want to start with the negative, not the positive. So okay, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, let's do it this way. Since be, since because of the circumstances of the recording, let's just go with basic thoughts. Not as many spoilers if if we can. We're going to give people one more holiday weekend, which is this New Year's weekend, to finish up on Soul and Wonder Woman and anything else before we go deep down in spoilers. So. What did you think of it? Of course, on Twitter and on all over social media, you and I were doing our tweets about the movie as we were streaming it. So what did you think about this movie? Positives, negatives, kind of your overall thoughts that you would really want to give somebody who hasn't seen it yet if they were looking for your opinion on Wonder Woman 1984, currently on HBO Max and in select theaters. You know, there's really not much to spoil. I watched it. I watched it when it came out. I thought it was fine. I do think it's one of the lower-end DC movies. I quite enjoy a lot more than that. 
I think it's a, I don't want to say a huge step down, but it's definitely a step down from the original Wonder Woman, which I thought was arguably the best DC movie. It's very long, unnecessarily. The acting is superb. Positive the acting is great. I like the way it's shot. And Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins, they get each other. They have a nice vibe. And so do all the actors, honestly. But especially those two, like, she knows how to write Diana. And I love that. Um, that's all the positives I truly have. I think it's very much a bad script, I would say. I wouldn't say badly directed, but obviously that does come in at, like, as much as we love Patty Jenkins, we have to be a little critical of, okay, this isn't one of your hands, we would say. But I think the biggest detriment of this movie was the writing. It really doesn't hit a tone. It's kind of all over the place. A lot doesn't really make sense, even in a superhero movie. And it just leaves you with the, okay. And I think some people say it best where, man, this movie had a lot of pressure because it was the pretty much the only superhero movie we've gotten during the pandemic. And we really expected a home run, a grand slam. And we kind of got a single, uh, a lead off hit maybe. So I think people were expecting so much more. I think where people get confused is this is how all movies are reviewed. Before Twitter, it was Ibram Rober. But, you know, obviously with Twitter, we get in that stance of either you love it or you hate it, which I don't think it's either. I think it really comes down to it's okay movie. I mean, if you love it or you do hate it, that's your opinion. I just think people go very harsh on it or very ultra positive for no reason of something can be okay. You can love certain parts, like a certain aircraft in a movie and a certain cameo, and not like, okay, the rioting or the jumping around. I totally agree. I think you hit on most of the big points that I would like to get onto. I mean, the, the cameo at the end, fantastic. I think... Probably the favorite part of the movie. I, and I think yeah. most people's favorite part. And that's not... No offense, that probably really shouldn't be your favorite part. It should just be a cherry on top. Not like, oh, I like that more than most when I got. Yeah, and I think... For example, Chris Pine is one of my favorite parts in this movie. I hate how Chris Pine is brought into this movie. I think it's a weak story point. I think there's a lot of holes in that story point. I think Pedro Pascal is wonderful in this movie, but I think he makes a lot of bad writing, a lot of cheesy writing sound good. I think Kristen Wiig is phenomenal in it. I don't have to like everything that Cheetah does in this movie. I think Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. Patty Jenkins gets Wonder Woman. This is a – it's a lot of good – and a lot of meh, and some bad. And that, to me, just makes it okay. It just makes it eh. And here's the interesting thing I, I, I have to say about Wonder Woman. I enjoyed a lot of parts of it. But there was one mo moment of it that was just really detrimental that makes it go from a, let's say, like a solid 8 to more of like a 6 or a 7. And that I is... A seven. Yeah, and that is halfway through the movie, I looked over to the lovely Nicole Mancha, and I turned to her, and I'm like, hey, what's the plot of the movie? Like, exactly. what, what are we doing? Like, we've been, we're, we're an hour and a half into this movie, and we don't know what's going on. Like, there is nothing going on. It's just a lot of circumstances and things happening without actually something happening until finally something happens. And then, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that there's not action, that there's not good scenes. It's just, what is the point of Wonder Woman 1984? And that's my question at the end of it, is what is the point of the movie? It seems like a lot of filler. And that's the, you know, and that's the problem with the Wonder Room that you're going to come into is we know where the story goes. Our last time seeing Diana, she's forming the Justice League with Bruce Wayne. That's the last we see of her in modern time. You know, in the cinematic universe, that is what we see of her. To set this movie, I think, again, the original Wonder Woman did it fantastic. Whereas this one was definitely, it felt like a filler. It felt like none of this at the end of it's going to truly matter. I think it does kind of still bode well for the DC Universe moving forward in the sense of if this is kind of a weaker film that we're going to get, then we're okay. I think that's really important to also say. It's like in this universe that we live in, in, in the social media world where everything is hyperbolic, you either love it or you hate it. You're, it's way too – for you know, it's way about womanism or it's all about feminism. You know what I'm saying? Like You're either it, a show or a cynic. Exactly. Right. But to me, it's like it's just a good movie. It's a director who's it's made – that made great movies, and this is not one of her great movies. We wouldn't. Nope. Here's the thing, too. It's not at that big of a deal because here's the thing: Chris, it happens to Christopher Nolan all the time. When you have well, it, just happened this year with him. According to people, like as much people that love Tenet, 
he kind of proved, okay, maybe this is the woman. I think she does the same thing here of like going into their next film. Now you know it doesn't work, mm -hmm. tenant wise. Okay, maybe being too confusing is an issue. Like I want to be confusing, but it should be rewarding to understand what I'm trying to do eventually, like Inception or Interstellar, where I think Tenet falls in and no, like if you don't get it, like you feel like an idiot. And I think that's his mistake where Patty Jenkins now can go into Woman in Part 3 and be like, okay, this didn't work, this didn't work, this did work. Okay, I got it. And here's the thing. You can see exactly what Patty Jenkins was going for in this movie. So I think that's also a sign of a great director who kind of, did it, but didn't quite get all, like you said, your, your analogy, who got a piece of the ball, but didn't quite get enough of it. And I think that's okay. That's There's nothing wrong with it. It wasn't a bad Wonder Woman movie. You know, you know, we didn't get Fantastic Four, any three of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. we still got a an entertaining movie for what it was. It's just we wanted more because we want Patty Jenkins to succeed, Gal Gadot to succeed, Pedro Pascal to succeed, Kristen Wiig, and that franchise. So I think that, you know, I will say this. It's not as toxic as still the Star Wars universe. No, exactly. And obviously Star Wars isn't a high right now because Mandalorian. You know, Pedro, and you know that Pedro Pascal and Kristen Wiig, I thought were fantastic. Wonderful. They were I wonderful almost feel bad that I feel like I wish, like I want more of them, and I think we might be able to get the. Like, obviously, one of them I don't think we'll get as much more compared to the other. Yeah. I also think that Cheetah is the Joker, the Lex Luthor, the Wonder Woman. And I don't think she gets that treatment necessarily the entire movie. I don't think she gets it at all. I think this is completely. It's a little. The setup is good. I don't think, and I hope that's because we're going to get more of her. Oh, yeah, no, no. They set up uh, 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 Barbara and Diana. They do a great job on that. But what they do, the when you're talking about Luther or Joker, when I want to see Cheetah, I want Cheetah to be the focal point. I want it to mean something to me. Exactly. And, and I don't think that happens. You know, she's she's almost like Bane to Joker in Arkham Asylum, where it's like, yeah, Bane is a big part of the story, but you're still trying to get to Joker. In this one, yeah. I feel like it's more about Max than it is about uh, Barbara, but Barbara plays a big part in the humanity that is uh, Wonder Woman, and that's a little bit into the spoilers, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there definitely is the intertwine that you can see a good director like Patty Jenkins being able to pull off if she pulls it off, you know? Yeah. So, with that, good brother, I think that uh, pretty much puts a wrap into Wonder Woman, this easy review that we're going to do. Of course, we'll talk a little bit more as the weeks go on and you're in the Mercado Airwave studio. With that, I haven't seen this movie yet. It is actually on the docket for dinner tonight. So, on Disney Plus, the latest Pixar movie, one of the movies affected by the pandemic, just like Wonder Woman, is an exclusive now on Disney Plus. Good Brother, without giving away too many spoilers, again, I don't know how many spoilers you can give on this movie besides the actual ending of it or whatnot, but this is another movie that's going to be a lot of sh a lot of viewing when it comes to this weekend, with it being New Year's weekend. Tell me your thoughts on the latest Pixar film. Uh, I thought it was beautiful. I think Pixar doesn't really make bad movies. I mean, even if they have their bad movie, would be someone else's greatest hit. The like, Good Dinosaur. Uh, DreamWorks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like that. That was even a hit for mm -hmm. what it was. It's a beautiful movie. It is probably visually the greatest animation we've ever seen. I really enjoyed it. I also think I think this movie for the black community is what Coco was to the Mexican mm, community. Interesting. Uh, if you're in that community, this might be your favorite movie. And I completely get that. It's not my favorite. And I think I'll go over my issues real quick is because they're small. I think when you make a Pixar movie, it should be for adult and kids because it's a Pixar company. I feel this movie out of a lot of Pixar movies, there's not a lot for kids. Oh, really? And I, th I think that's a problem like, compared to a lot of the other ones where this is a very adult movie with a very adult and i don't it's not that i'm saying kids shouldn't be involved in these conversations of purpose and you know meaning of life but they're also like i feel like in coco they sprinkle in a little for the kids and in toy story a little for the kids over the dogs where i think this movie suffers is they don't sprinkle anything for the kids it's very much an adult film and if you are especially a black male i think this is gonna this is gonna touch your heartstrings this is gonna be your life and I think that's what, for me, I was looking for a little bit more of the cheekiness. I just saw a fantastic film. Had you taken Pixar out of it, I might have gone into it with a different expectation and enjoyed it more compared to what I got. That's the only negative I have. Positive, 
it's a beautiful film with a beautiful message of your purpose, your passions, and the middle of living life. And that's as much like getting into without spoiling it. But man, does it touch your heart strings. And it really makes you think about your life and what you do with it and the level of success you can measure and what, you know, just things like that. And it's one of those movies where I think you have to see. And I think maybe someone like you can, me saying what I just said now can look and be like, I see what he's saying. And maybe you'll love it. Like I said, I feel when I talk to people about Coco, the people, they love it. But if you're a Mexican American, it's your all time favorite thing compared to someone who's like, no, I liked it a lot. A couple of things went over my head. I feel like that was this movie when it comes to the message of adults and children. And I also think it really is a black movie and that's great. Like everyone should have their fair representation. And so just because something's not made specifically for me, doesn't mean I can't enjoy it. But overall, I thought it was very good. And I, I my score went up the second viewing. I gave it a seven at first because it didn't hit me the way I wanted it to. Upon second viewing, it went up a whole point to an eight. I think it's going to be a movie they people talk about later on. You know, it's going to be one that over the years it'll win the Oscar this year. Yeah, more than likely. But I think it's going to have kind of that that reputation of maybe it wasn't as beloved initially when it started streaming. But I think over the years, because it's going to be you know living on Disney Plus and it was the Christmas movie of 2020, then you'll see over the years a lot of kids who are growing up with it now it being a big part of their life. So I think it's it's just wonderful. So you're saying the animation's even better than like the colorfulness that was in Coco. Yeah, it's the, well, yeah, because it's just, it's 2021, man, or 2020 when this film was made. Regard, it's the most modern animation we've ever gotten, and it shows. Hey, so it's like, that big it's, of a jump. It's beautiful. Like, it's, then there's some animation choices they make that, like, really deliver, and you wouldn't think they deliver, and I don't know if they show this in the previews or not, like, how certain characters are animated compared to others. But once you see it, you're like, oh, man, that's that's nice. Like, I like that. That was a, that was a nice decision that I didn't see coming. Voice acting is phenomenal. Like I said, it's a great movie. I really enjoyed it. Again, I again to me, Coco's the greatest Pixar movie ever made. But again, possibly a little biased about it. So give me a final score for Soul. Eight. I, it went up one whole point after second viewing and really digging into that message of like, Oh, okay. Like, don't look at it like a kid's movie. Look at it like just a normal animated adult film. Well, I think I could say this for maybe the both of us, but you, you know, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I will say at the very least, there was a lot of people who say maybe Wonder Woman didn't hit the way they wanted to. And some people are saying Coco is this, Coco is, excuse me, that uh, Soul is this, Soul is the other. And I think all in all, the one thing that I can say, and this is kind of the big thing when it comes to any type of form of entertainment I have to recommend both. I haven't seen Soul yet, but I think yes, it's an important movie to watch. And I think even if you don't love Wonder Woman or it ends up being your favorite film or your least favorite film, you have to watch it. It is a yes. pretty – it's a big movie. It is a big movie of the year. It's kind of a movie that we'll be talking about later on because of the effects of Rona 2019-2020, you know? So I think – all in all, it's a nice thing to have when you have two things that you must watch. On top of a world of all these streaming television shows, it's nice to have two movies that are uh, have such easy access to you and that are going to be important down the road when it comes to pop culture conversations. Thanks for those people who have HBO. Uh, just know that Wonder Woman's only going to be there for a month. So this is the first of those kind of deals we're seeing where it got a release on the platform, but it's not going to stay on the platform for for after a month because then it's going to go back to VOD, and then they're, we're going to kind of learn how they're going to distribute this after it goes to VOD for a little bit. But you only have the month if you have the subscription, so I would advise, regardless, like Mike just said, go out and watch it. Like You already have it. You might, it's very enjoyable. It kills two and a half hours. You should be indoors anyway. It's cold. C- corona. <laughs> enjoy it but just for those people out there who are new to platforms or aren't as you know there aren't the highway men that you and me are it's only going to be there for a month so really if you're going to watch it i would advise doing it sooner than later because it'll pop away soon and finally good brother we're not going to spend a lot of time on it it's already been over on the internet we've talked about it on social media and we really didn't get a chance because of the holiday break that we took so let's just talk about it for five minutes 
the season finale happened of The Mandalorian, and we see that the one and only, if you haven't watched it, and if you haven't somehow stayed out the internet, spoilers in 3, 2, 1, Luke, mother effing Skywalker, we kind of call it, but we kind of didn't, but we kind of did, I mean, just five minutes, what you think of Mandalorian, how excited are you, what do you think is going to happen? I wasn't... I don't think I I like it. I loved it a lot. Okay, I loved it. I thought the episode overall was a little weak compared to the whole season. I thought the episode was very much pandering to the ending. I don't know why the writing of that episode was just so geeky to me and so corny. Like some of the stuff they made him say, I was like, man, like this sounds like the prequels. And I love the prequels, but I think it's crazy to me that had we not got that ending, I think people would have been more critical of the beginning. That maybe that's just my opinion. I thought it was very cheesy up until the ending. I thought, you know, Moff Gideon, he really kind of just folded. And I was very disappointed in that. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I thought you were going to have some like Gus level master plan. You killed the whole cartel. And I got, okay, you kind of just gave in. I'm like, haha, you can't accept this sword, which you can. And she technically can. She can. Haha, now you guys fight about it. Yeah. And I was like, really? That was it? Like, that's the thing. But obviously, the ending is one of the greatest Star Wars things we've ever gotten. Better than Vader. Um, the fight, obviously. I thought the the CGI is terrible. Like, I think yeah. you really got to stop doing it. Yeah. I would have much rather you recast, but I understand the confusion. Or de-age, honestly. The de-aging even looks better than, than the whole CGI they've been trying to do. Can I say one thing but about it, though? Uh, let yeah, me say, yeah, I'll say one thing about it, though. It's like I'm okay with them doing it the one time. They, they got it out of their system. They did it. Now I think it's so much easier to recast, if you will. You know, like you did it. You, you got young Luke, and now if you really want to make Sebastian Stan your Luke Skywalker, if you find somebody else, you can do it at this point. It does seem like you want to be in that world a lot more, and you're not afraid of it. I think if you give the – like obviously it was a surprise. And so that's why I'm okay for giving it. But going forward, if you really want to use Luke and like be like, man, I really want to go through these stories, which it seems like they want to do, recast. I think this episode is for old Star Wars fans because, you know, I love fucking with them. I think this really shows like, man, The Last Jedi makes more sense, doesn't it now? Like, we're going to see this kid's journey, but like when you see him in The Last Jedi, he's a man that's been through it all and he's just over it by now. Like, that's the story I want to see. And I love Last Jedi. It's, it's my second favorite Star Wars movie of all time because. Without even this story, I can tell, man, I can only imagine what Luke went through to make him like this. And to finally get those stories of him being a, you know, like the Jedi Master and to see where it ends, I want to see more of that. I think it just opens up the door more to make Grogu that much more valuable to the IP. Because now all the questions are, it's like, well, I've seen every Star Wars movie. I've seen all the canon. I don't know who Grogu is. So, like, where are we going with this? He goes to Luke. Friend? Okay, cool. Is he a friend? Did he... I personally, I think the way they're going to explain it, because now people are asking a good question of like, well, didn't all his students die? There was no more Jedi when he yeah. came. Well, maybe he's on, you know, it's a big universe. Maybe he went back with Mando and they're doing other stuff. Which, I mean, I guess it's its own thing. I just think I'm, I trust Filoni and John to do this, obviously. You know, like they're, they're, it's their sandbox and we're all just playing with them with these cool Star Wars toys. But I think it, it does – it's a good and bad thing because obviously like I, I have skeptical hippo eyes. Like can you pull this off? But the best thing you can ask for entertainment is I'm intrigued. So let me see what you do with this character I fell in love with. I fell in love with Grogu. I fell in love with Mando. Make me, and obviously I've always been in love with, with the original trilogy of characters that we love with Leia and with Han and with – with uh, Luke, and now incorporating Luke with one of the things that we're most passionate about recently as a Star Wars fandom. Nobody's, look at you can love the prequels, you can love the new trilogy, but nothing has made people more endearing back to the Star Wars fandom than Mandalorian. So to see what they're going to do, and if they can pay it off and entwine it with the trilogies, it's going to be really interesting. And I said it from, and I think, I and I stand by it, I say... You know, this really proves how important The Force Awakens was. And I agree with you where I think we would have gotten movies regardless eventually. But I think The Force Awakens really bringing Star Wars back to the stores, back to the back to the zeitgeist. And it being as popular as it was, whether you believe it's just A New Hope redone. Well, guess what? A New Hope was the most outdated, so it needed to be redone. 
Absolutely, and I think Mandalorian is kind of just filling in those blanks that we had in expanding canon and video games. So it's kind of all just coming back into full circle. So I'm excited about the future of Star Wars. And I think next week, good brother, maybe we'll do another easy episode. Except we'll talk about everything that's dropping on streaming. And some of the rare gems that might be dropping in the movie theaters. And if everything is going the way it's going, we keep wearing our masks. These vaccines come out. There might be a chance, good brother, that 2021... We will be in the movie theaters for some huge movies. So maybe next week we'll do our annual special of looking down the list of some of the movies that we're excited about. But all in all, Good Brother, I think we touched on everything for a shortened over-the-internet episode here on The Good Brothers. We paid our respects to the one and only Mr. Brody Lee. We gave a review of Wonder Woman 1984, and we got to gush a little bit about Mandalorian because the holiday season came and went. Hopefully you and yours We're safe and sound, and thank you so much for helping grow not just the Good Brothers, not just Sports from the Couch, not just Murder Mysteries and more, not just the Gone Missing Podcast, the entire network, every project that we did. And I honestly could say for Nicole, for Alex, and myself, you've helped us grow as people. We have responsibilities with this network that are outside our other responsibilities. And we take passion for what we do when we come here because we put a lot of ourselves in it. And we appreciate when you... And, and I'm speaking to you directly, who's listening to us. Whether it's 100, 1,000, or just one person, thank you for helping us get through 2020 and helping us make 2021 our year. Good, brother. Thank you so much for jumping on to the Zoom, to putting those AirPods on and jumping on the show for this week. I cannot wait to get you back in the studio and we can tackle all the craziness that will be 2021. But that'll do it for us on this edition of the Good Brothers here on Mercado Airwaves. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday weekend and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the year and I hope you make us a part of that year. You can follow the good brother all over the universe. He's on Twitter at Mercado21 Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media. Instagram, Mike Mercado Media. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Become a producer of the show on Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Home to our interviews with athletes and celebrities that you can get ad free. And before anybody else, that's Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. And we have swag, guys. Start up 2021, correct? By getting some good swag at Teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. For the good brother himself, Alex Mercado, I'm the good brother, Mike Mercado. We'll see you on the next episode of The Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. Thanks for joining us here on The Good Brothers, here on Mercado Airwaves. 